All right, when it comes to fixing electrical problems in your classic motorcycle, your two best friends in the world are going to be your wiring diagram and your multimeter. Um, these wiring diagrams, at first, they can look pretty daunting and uh, pretty indecipherable. I mean, they're made out of all these tiny little lines and symbols and what have you that don't really seem to make a whole lot of sense if you look at them you know, as a whole like this. Um, but there are a couple of techniques you can use to decipher these wiring diagrams and understand what they mean and how they can help you figure out, figure out your problem. And today we're going to talk about a couple of the tricks that I use to um, figure out what's going on here and how it relates to my bike. Alright, so normally I'm a fan of the actual physical repair manuals that I can take out to the driveway of the shop or whatever and um, access while I'm working on the bike. But when it comes to wiring diagrams, sometimes it's useful to find an electronic version. That way you can blow it up and you can see what all's going on. This is um, the wiring diagram to a KZ400. I just googled it, found it online. It was really um, easy to access. And I can blow it up so that there's actually some white in between those black lines. So if you guys want to uh, blow up your screen too while we're working on this you can see what I'm talking about alright so suppose you have a problem uh, let's say with this load this is the rear left turn signal let's say it's not coming on right what I will usually do is I will go searching for the voltage if uh, you know somebody on the forum says to you oh go search for your voltage you know and find out where it is this is what they mean um, you take your multimeter put it on volts you know 12 volts or whatever and um, put the black end in the battery and for the red end you just take it and start probing around and find where the volts are so let's say you know I've confirmed that the um, the fuse is still good and the battery is good alright so I'm gonna take my red end and uh, I'm gonna turn on the bike and I'm gonna flip the switch for the turn signal and I'm gonna touch it right here okay this is where the S the S marked wire comes out what does S mean well, S means slate. So it's going to be this gray marked wire. And so I'm going to touch it right here. If I don't find any voltage, if it doesn't read anything, well, then I know that the problem is back further along the live line. This is where it grounds out right here. It grounds out to the frame. And from there, it connects to the ground on the battery. But um, I know that it is going to, the problem is going to be further on down the line. So I just follow the line. And here I have this connection, and it connects to a green wire. These connections do go bad, and so it is, um, you know, it's definitely possible that there's some corrosion in here. And so I'll take this apart and I'll put the red wire in there and see if there's any um, voltage in here. Now, the reason I don't use a test light, um, I used to, but I don't do it anymore, is because some of these, uh, you know, some devices on your on your motorcycle will be getting, you know, 9, 10 volts or whatever, and they, they won't be able to function because they need a certain amount of voltage. And so a test light will actually read, you know, the light will shine up with just a couple, you know, with, with minimal voltage, but it might not be enough to activate, say, I don't know, a starter motor or whatever. And so that's why I, uh, that's why I use a multimeter rather than a test light. All right, and so let's say there's no voltage in here either. Well, basically all I'm going to do is is just follow the line back, and here we have a connector. It's this five-way connector, and, and um, you know we're a green wire now. That's what the gray mean, the G means. So I go here, and I'll just do the same thing. I'll put my red end in here and try and find some some voltage. I should have alternating voltage because the blinker should be blinking. But uh, if not, I'll just keep going back, and you just keep going back, you know find where it connects. Where these wires crisscross, that's not a connection. You need sort of a dot or a blob right here. Um, and that is uh, just how the the technical artist or whatever, or the graphic designer who made this, decide to represent it. These are as if the wires are just sort of lying on top of each other, but not connected. So we just go back and back and back, and sometimes you'll go all the way back and you'll find yourself at a different load. Like here we are at the turn signal indicator. All right, well, that's obviously not where the power is originating from, so we'll come back here, and here's a connection, and it comes down, and uh, where are we going to get? We're going to get to the switch here, you know, and you just sort of follow it back, and every one of these junction points is where I will put my um, 
my multimeter and seek for voltage. And when I find the voltage, when I go all the way back and find out where it is, I know, okay, right there between there and the last time I didn't find voltage, that's where the problem is. Burnt out wire, corroded connection, um, it could be a relay has gone bad, whatever. Sometimes I will take a highlighter and highlight the circuits of um, the, uh, the device which isn't working properly. And that is the, uh, that's the first thing I do when I'm researching how I'm going to fix this thing is I'll just sort of highlight everything so I can see it a little bit easier and I know what route it takes throughout the bike. Sometimes the problem is not necessarily that the load doesn't work, it just is that um, it keeps blowing a fuse. This is a, a pretty big problem and um, I see it all the time, you know, and so one thing to look for in that instance is when a, there's a connection or a wire that has lost some of its insulation and is grounding out to the frame. So to find that, I will start at the turn signal again. I'll put my, um, my, uh, the black side of my multimeter to a ground, just like I did before. But this time I'm going to set it to ohms, and I'm going to take my red lead, and I'm going to just basically trace back again and try and find um, where, it is, uh, where it's grounding out to the frame. If I can put, let's say I, you know, I have my black end grounded, and I put my red end here, and I find that there's continuity, that means that, um, uh, that means that current is running along these wires and all the way to, let's say the problem is like right here, let's say a rat was chewing on it or whatever and it's ground out to the frame, it will go into the frame and then back down to the ground side of the battery, which is right here. And so there's going to be sort of like this mini circuit and, um, you know, the electricity takes the path of least resistance and so it's that's you know where the the, the break is going to be and so um, that's just another setting on your multimeter that you can use to find a different type of problem